In the last video, I installed Notebook for IPython by using Anaconda. Now, the Mad Coder that codes at midnight has posted a similar video uh, regarding how to download stuff and put it on your computer so that you can use the IPython Notebook. Cool. He also showed this web page at pypi.python that has more gizmos to download when the time is appropriate. But for right now, we're just going to start playing around with the IPython Notebook look at some basic tools to see what it does. I watched some um, tutorials on YouTube to try and figure out this notebook thing and found some ones that were better than others. Um, so I kind of have some idea of some things to do today and hopefully it will work. So once again we're going to start with the Anaconda launcher and from there we can launch the IPython notebook. So it takes a little bit to get started. There's a, a black window that pops up and it loads some code, and that takes a little bit. But after um, like 30 seconds or so, it brings us to the notebook dashboard, and this is like a file cabinet uh, where we can put all the files that are called notebooks that notebook makes into. So we're going to click on where this document so that we're in the right file. I have to go one down one more level into the IPython notebooks, and then we'll be in the right directory. So here's the space where we will um, save all the saved notebooks, the notebooks that we create, the programs, the IPython programs we create. Uh, right now it's empty because we haven't done anything yet. So what we're going to do is click New Notebook and open up a new file and do some programming. So here's the interface where we can program into Notebook. The first thing to do in whenever you open up a new file is to give it a name. You can click on the name at the top where it says Untitled, and we'll give this a new name, something like Sample Test or First Program or something like that. Now, what I've heard is that Notebook doesn't mind spaces in the name of the file, but Python does. So, just to be safe, I didn't put any spaces in the name. Now, one of the first things we see here is that there's uh, kind of a normal drop-down menu kind of thing that we would see on normal programs. So we'll go ahead and take a look at some of these features. Okay, so in file, we're going to see some things we normally see in file, like opening a new file, um, opening an existing file, uh, make a copy of the file. Um, we can rename it, or as opposed to just renaming it up at the top like we just did. Um, we can save and checkpoint, um, and all that kind of stuff. In the edit menu, uh, everything's going to have to do with cells. So There's like cut cell, copy cell, split cell, and merge cell. Um, and we'll get into what cells are in just a second. Under insert, we can insert new cell above the current cell, or insert a new cell below the current cell. Under the cell menu, we've got more stuff to do with cells. We can run cells uh, individually, or we can run all cells. We'll get more to that later. And then also we can change the cell type. And there's also um, a button that changes the cell type, but it's currently hidden underneath that menu. This box right here, this is a cell. And this is where we can write the programming code for Python. Um, we can also change the type of cell so that it, it's a, instead of a code cell, it displays text, and it looks really nice. Um, having English in the script is, is really good because I'll come back to a program months and years later and, and don't remember exactly what's going on. So I use a lot of English comments to, to help me remind me what's going on in the program. Um, and then also in addition to that, the cells can use different languages. So you could use Python in one cell, you could use C in another cell, you could use HTML in another cell, and that way you can use a lot of different programs um, within your program. It should be quite powerful. Um, from this menu we can change the cell's type into um, from, from being a code cell into being a uh, text cell. We're going to select uh, I think heading 3 and that should be a nice looking text. Okay, so when we switch the type, it doesn't 
change the look of the text until we uh, run the cell. All that happens is that the line number disappears because it's no longer a code cell, it's a text cell. And so we can go to the cell menu and select run all. You can also select run, which will just run the one cell that's selected, or you can hit run all and run all the cells. And unless you've got some program that's really complicated and there's some reason to just run the one selected cell, just run all. Um, otherwise, it's just be running part of the program and that might cause bugs. Now that we've run it, the cell has the nice um, looking heading text that we were looking for. It's now alive because it says we should write code when really we're now writing text. So we can edit that by double clicking in the cell. We can add another cell into our program from the insert menu and uh, just select insert cell below and we'll get a new cell. Now in a code cell, um, we can still use English by using a hashtag. If we put a hashtag in it, then anything after that will become um, English until we hit return. Um, and then when we make a new cell, there's no line number in it until we run it. Um, once we, we run this cell, then a line number will be put into it. So I added a couple new cells and ran the program. The first command I'm using is called print. Now when we give a program the print command, the output appears underneath the cell. Basically print tells the program to generate some output. When we use quotation marks to tell the program what to print, and it will say it. Now, when I was young, I just thought it was big time fun to get a computer to output dirty words. But that's um, yeah, not as funny anymore. Anyways, notice that both of the print commands in the second cell are considered line two. Now, there's some way to get multiple line numbers into one cell. Let me try and figure that out. Okay, so I figured it out. It's a little bit different than I thought it was. Instead of adding another line number um, outside the cell, each cell has its own line number. And then you can put line numbers inside the cell. Um, what you do is you hit Control-M, and then you let go of that. Um, that puts the thing into the cell into command mode. The line around the cell will turn from green into gray. And then you hit L. And it'll go out of the command mode and turn back into green again. Um, and you'll have the line numbers inside the cell. Um, now, every time I run the program, the line numbers outside the cell change. So instead of they, they were 1 and 2, and now they're 7 and 8. There's ways to get them to 1 and 2 again. What you have to do is restart the kernel, which is the thing that is running the program, and it kind of remembers where, what the current state of the program is at, and then, um, which is up in the kernel menu. And then you have to kind of change the cells from code cells into text cells, um, markup cells, and then um, change it back into code cells. And then when you run the program again, it'll be nice lines 1, 2, 3, and 4 again. Okay, so I added another box that uh, prints out hello mad coder that codes at midnight. While I was doing that, I noticed that if you hold the mouse underneath the line number, then this little gray box will appear. And if you click that, um, the cell will go into command mode. The, the border around the cell will turn gray. And, you can, and then if you hit L, it'll give line numbers inside that cell. So there's Another way to do it with the mouse instead of hitting Control M. Now, what this program is doing now is it says, "Thank you for answering my questions. Hello, Mad Coder that codes at midnight." And I would prefer it if it said, "Hello, Mad Coder that codes at midnight. Thank you for answering all my questions." So what I'm going to do is move this third cell up above the second code cell. Um, and uh, we'll see what happens. Okay, so I can move the cell up from the edit menu. Okay, so the cell is now above the other cell. Now notice the line numbers are not in order. It goes 9, 11, 10. But when I run the program, uh, it'll 
automatically put them in the correct order. So we run it, and now it's right in the right order. It goes 12, 13, 14. Uh, it's not 1, 2, 3, but at least it's not in the wrong order. Okay, now we can start getting into some of the more fun parts of the programming, getting more a little bit more complicated at any time. So we're going to do some loops. Um, so what it is, I added a cell, and I typed in for I in range 5, colon. And so what that does is I stands for index. And so it's going to have I do 1, and then I do 2, and then I do 3, and then I do 4, and then I do 5. And every time it does that, it's going to print dirty word. Um, and so it'll print dirty, when I run the program, it prints dirty word five times in the output, which as a kid, I just would have thought was hilarious. Um, you know, I would do things like infinite loops so that the uh, computer would just say dirty words until um, someone that knew how to stop the infinite loop would come along and stop it. But until that happened, it was just dirty, dirty, dirty. Okay, so the last thing we're doing today is called a nested loop, and it's basically a, a loop inside a loop. So we can get really fun there. So um, what I did was I added another index called J, and I gave that a range of 2, and I said print dirty dog. Right, so it'll go through I five times, and each time it does that, it'll go through J twice. So the output is dirty word, dirty dog, dirty dog, 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 dirty word, dirty dog, dirty dog. Um, you know, it's, so it's, we can start having some fun here. Um, and so that's everything for today. Um, again, thank you for the Mad Hatter that goes at midnight. Awesome videos. Um, and then I'm going to, uh, my next video, we're going to do some mathematical modeling, uh, which would be fun. Uh, we need to do the math modeling, mathematical modeling before we start getting into data analysis because according to the scientific method, the theory has to come before the data um, in order to be proper. So um, that video should be coming pretty soon.